Hello guys, Turbocharged51 over here! How y'all doing? Guys, it's official, this is the first YouTube video of my F1 2018 career. Stay tuned. Thanks for coming by. I'm sure you're very anxious to get out on track. It's taken a lot of effort to get to F1. Congratulations. But the real work starts now. This is... Claire, motorsports journalist. Nice to meet you. You'll be seeing quite a lot of me throughout the season. So, you had a pretty impressive junior career. How are you feeling about your move into F1? Do you think you have what it takes? Let's save the questions for a proper interview, shall we? I'm sure you'll have a lot more to talk about once there's been some action on track. I think we could fit you in after FP1 if you're free. That works for me. I'll grab you the second you finish on the track. Remember, the relationship you have with the team can be affected by what you say to the media. So be careful. Anyway, it's time to catch up with Carl. He's waiting for you in the data center. Good luck out there today. Welcome to the data center. Here, we've got access to all kinds of information, including car telemetry, weather, lap times, tire wear, the list goes on. Plus, we've got a direct link back to the factory, so we're in constant communication with the team there. We need you to regularly feedback about areas of the car that are lacking and help us direct our resources in the most productive way. More effort here equals a quicker car, so it's well worth the effort. Good luck this season. Welcome to your new team. Toro Rosso are famed for nurturing promising talent and kick-starting the careers of exciting drivers from Vettel to Sainz to Ricardo. But they're much more than that. This is a strong team that expects regular points finishes. Yo guys, as you guys can see here, I'm welcomed into the Formula 1 community. I am hyped. I'm gonna push hard with this career. I'm not looking for a world championship in the first season. I just want to get this car to be a top team racing car otherwise than that um, this is a very unpredictable career mode so let's see what happens and let us head to practice one we're about to join the action in what is sure to be an interesting practice session here in Melbourne it's not long until we get the session underway and we'll have some cars appearing out on the track Beside me to take you through free practice today is a man with three decades of racing experience under his belt. It is, of course, Anthony Davidson. Thanks for joining us today, Anton. Tell me, where should we be focusing our attention today? I think we need to be looking across the entire field to see how far these cars are able to push a single set of tyres. While everyone will be trying different setups and running with different fuel loads, if you're attentive enough, you can definitely pick out trends for each type of tyre compound which will give us a rough idea of how long the drivers are able to stay out there during a stint in the race. Yo guys, we're here in the Toro Rosso Honda garage and things are looking beautiful. This is just saying this is one of the most beautiful cars on the grid. And um, I'm just going to show you guys a quick collaboration of all my practice programs. Okay, not all of them, but like a few. And um, I'm just going to show you guys how it went. First of all, that I can say about the Toro Rosso, it's a very consistent car. Um, I have my own career mode on other profile of my PlayStation. But this car is the most consistent car I've ever driven, and I'm honest about that. But the thing is, it's a consistent car without any pace. That's its problem. We're the weakest in the power um, tree, we're one of the weakest in the chassis, but we're reasonably okay with aerodynamics. So I'm going to focus very hard on chassis and power in the beginning of the season just to get the car up to standard, especially in the power, because we've got a few power circuits. I mean, round three and four is China and Baku, and you guys know how long the straights are on those tracks. So yeah, I just got a feel for the car, and like I said, she is consistent. I did a few laps with her, and I was like, I could actually just keep on getting better and getting better. Other than that, uh, yeah, we're back in the garage, here's all my completed practice programs, and uh, I felt good about it, and I was only going to use practice 2 for the qualifying pace program. So yeah, let's quickly head to Claire and hear what that very interesting reporter has to say.
It's been a lot of hard work, but here you are making your debut in Formula One. You must be thrilled. So how are you finding things at the team? Are you settling in? What are you expecting out of this season? Are you just aiming to find your feet in Formula One or do you see something more? Appreciate your time. So we're back here in the, I would say, the, the track of the Toroso track. As you guys see, I did the durability upgrade. Um, I saw that the car was re rearing its parts very quickly in practice one. So I just did that upgrade to get the car, uh, to make the, the um, reliability go up a bit. I know I was going to wear the car a lot this first weekend, so just hopefully it will wear less as the weekends go on. But for the first weekend, I'm a little bit tied down. But that's okay. As you guys can see here, uh, I'm going in with the practice program. I got the first lap green. I wanted to go for a purple, and as you guys can see, I failed the second lap, went on to the third one, and I just, I couldn't. I couldn't go any faster, and this, this second lap was actually uh, matching my first one, even though I was on worn tires and less fuel. But uh, I just couldn't get the purple, so this is the only practice program that I didn't get perfect. But other than that, I was I was satisfied with how the we, the practices went, and um, yeah, let's see what Claire has to say for the final time she bothers me before the race. You scraped the walls a few times. Were you struggling for grip? You really went all out in practice today. Are you testing new components? Well, thanks anyway. Okay, those were a few interesting questions from Claire's side. As you guys can see on the screen, you better hit that like button and we're off to qualifying. This is going to be a good one. Hopefully I'm not in last place. Ah! Welcome to Melbourne, where qualifying for the Australian Grand Prix should be getting underway shortly. And I'm here, of course, with Anthony Davidson on what has turned out to be a very pleasant day indeed. No weather to interfere, no problems on the track, so absolutely no room for error. That's right, Crofty. It's looking good out there at the moment. Each team will have their own game plan for this session. And of course, once the cars leave the garage, they'll be under Park Ferme conditions. So any last minute adjustments need to be done right here and now. Beyond that, it's all up to the driver. Who can keep their tyres in the right temperature? Who can hit their apexes? No race fuel on board these days, of course. These are the fastest cars we've had in a long, long time. And it's right here in qualifying where they're at their absolute peak. Let's get started. Yo guys, we're here in qualifying. It's extremely overcast actually, but it's fine. Here we, I go on to my first qualifying lap. Fresh out of ultra soft. I overfueled the car a little bit because I felt that I needed to go for more than one lap. But also then, uh, the fuel only held one lap. As you guys can see, I, can, I only have one and a half laps of fuel left. And on the max engine setting, this car is heavy on fuel. Oh my soul. She just, she just, she keeps gobbling and gobbling fuel. It's like an alcoholic just for petrol. I don't know. I don't know. But in any case, as you guys can see, they did a 122.7. Not a reasonably quick lap time, but um, it's going good. It's going good. I felt that I could go faster, definitely. Um, so I gave the car minimum fuel, making sure that I did my out lap just slowly so that I didn't burn ex and, uh, too much fuel so that I wouldn't finish my lap. I fast forwarded the time just to go out in the last three minutes and here I start my final lap with only 20 seconds left on the clock. And to be honest, I gained in the first part of the lap but at the last sector I just completely made too many mistakes and I completely fell out of it. As you guys can see here, I'm up slightly, I go into the, into the, the second to last 90 degree right-hander, I go in here and then from here I just also 
The tires, I weren't feeling the tires so much and then I realized I actually didn't put on a fresh set of ultra softs. I was on a worn set and that just completely fluffed up my time. So yep, I didn't make it out of quality one and I am starting at the absolute worst position for my first Grand Prix for Toro Rosso. I'm dead lost. So yeah, that didn't went didn't go well, but still there are no points for qualifying the points are in the race. I lost my first rivalry battle with Pierre Gasly. I don't know how he made it to quality 2, I honestly don't know. But still, I'm in my beginning phases and things are going well. So, um, okay, well not well, but they're also not going bad. We're, we're at a medium pace. Obviously I expected a better session, but these things happen from time to time. Try to make up for it in the race. New drivers, new cars, and a new Formula One season. But it's the same Albert Park that we've come to know and love for more than two decades now that hosts the first round of a 21 race championship, taking us from here in Melbourne, Australia, across the globe, before we eventually reach the season finale at the Yas Marina circuit in Abu Dhabi. Here's the track then, 16 corners, 6 to the left and 10 to the right. They make up the 3.3 miles around Albert Park Lake with turn 1 and 3 providing the best opportunities to pass. We have plenty of changes to the sport this year with the addition of new safety features, the return of France and Germany in an expanded 21 race calendar and more tyre compounds than ever before. And of course, we have some big car manufacturers back in the sport too, with Alfa Romeo and Aston Martin returning as title sponsors for Sauber and Red Bull respectively. Well then, after an exciting qualifying session yesterday, let's take a look at how the cars line up. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position, and Kimi Raikkonen completes the front row. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Vettel, Verstappen, Daniel Ricciardo, and Perez, Magnussen. Holkenberg, Sainz, and Fernando Alonso, Grosjean, Ocon, Pierre Gasly, and Stroll, Bottas. They've taken a grid penalty. Leclerc, Stoffel van Dorn, and Marcus Ericsson, Sirotkin, and O'Connor. And now it's time to head down to the track. It's race time. Okay, guys. Strategy, strategy is keen. It's keen. It's keen. We have to get this right. I think I I played a little bit around with the stuff, but I realized the one the one stop was going to be the quickest, and I needed to get points. The thing about this car is I need to get points, and I need to be quick. So, uh, guys, enjoy the formation lap, and I hope you are as hyped as I am. Let's go.
guys were in the race I had a cracker of a first quarter I was a little boxed in but not too much I went for a major dive bomb I didn't realize that I was actually gonna make this many positions I'm up into 13th position and things are going awesome you guys saw at the front of the pack there was a lot of battling going on especially with two Red Bulls so um, we're gonna see if this is gonna be a Mercedes Ferrari or Red Bull season for the championship I'm not you guys are not just gonna watch my content of my car and my season I'm gonna keep you up to date with the championship as well as you guys can see I'm clo closing up to Roman Grosjean and the Haas and I go for a major dive bomb. Okay, here we go. So I'm up into 12th position. This is good. This is good. I know a lot of cars ahead of me are on a two-stop strategy. All the guys that are on ultra soft. So this was potential for points already. Roman Grosjean comes back at me. I just keep my line, keep defending, and we're going on. Further from here, we're just we're pushing on. We're pushing on. Stuff's going well. It's only the first lap. Still a long race to go. Um, as you guys can see, I run a 50% race. Um, Later on in the career, I might do a 100% race, but um, don't worry, you guys won't see everything. And I make a dive bomb on Fernando Alonso into the final corner. There we go. Okay, we can see that the Star Rosso is very quick on the first lap, and Alonso's already going to come back at me. Ah, defend! Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. I'm on the inside, keeping my line. A little bit late on the brakes. I just make the corner. I think I tried to touch the grass there, but I defend my position successfully. Gave Alonso a little bit of a squeeze. Yes, the replay, and um, I just come out of nowhere. I think if Fernando could have given a comment there, I honestly don't know what he would have said, but in typical Fernando fashion, he would have probably been a little bit upset with me because that was a little bit. Uh, what, what can you what can you call it? A rogue move, if you want. Um, they are just a fiend, and I keep going. Yep, there you can see I tap the grass. Wonderful. But I'm P11. Stuff's going well. This is going to be a good race if it keeps going like this. We head here onto lap four. The DRS has been enabled, as you guys probably know. The DRS gets enabled on lap three. That is when when a, a car behind you is within a second and he's on a DRS detection straight. He can open his rear wing, which reduces all the drag, and that car flies. And wonderful for me, Mr. Valtteri Bottas had a penalty and he is behind me. So basically. The w one of the four fastest cars on the grid is with the strongest engine is behind me and uh, I have to defend like my life depends on it. Um, later on, I just I, I just keep going, ooh, I nearly missed that corner again. So yeah, here we go, but this is behind me. This backtrack, you don't have DRS actually, but still, it's long and that Merc just flies. He's on the inside, I keep my outside line, inside for the next part of the chicane and I'm going. And for some other reason, I had DRS here. I think he literally just passed me as we went over the DRS de detection line. And then the DRS was given to me because he was ahead of me. But that's cool. That means I defended my position reasonably easily. And I was just keeping my position. I knew if I let these guys go, the chances of me getting points were less and less. So I just kept my foot to the floor and I burned up these tires. I'm not going to lie. I didn't try and save them at all. I just tried to keep my temps reasonably low. And I... Oh, Kevin Magnussen. What's wrong with K-Mag? What is wrong with K-Mag? No, 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 no. K-Mag, what's going on, dude? But, okay, but like I said, I was just keeping my temps low so the tires won't overheat, and I was just going for gold. I didn't want any caution, and, uh, yeah, as I'm talking about caution, the virtual safety car came out. I'm sure it's for Kevin Magnussen. Um, I don't actually know what was wrong with him. Did he, like, was he out of the race or whatever? The end of the lap, the virtual safety car ended, and we were all back up to racing speed, and Bottas was on my gearbox. So, let's go again. Come on, Bottas, bring it. Even though it's the strongest engine versus the weakest engine, I might be able to defend. Please defend Honda Power! And he completely just flies past me. Go for the dive, go for the dive. Ooh, that's a little bit of contact. I think I nipped him there, but I didn't push him off track, so any warning? contact with water no warning okay so I'm fine I'm fine he goes back at me again on the second straight I just just barrel down to the inside he's still alongside me and he has fallen behind me there we go oh that's wide and he's alongside me again I am making my own life hell there we go there we go he's still alongside me come on little Toro Rosso going to the corner fourth gear and I squeeze Bottas out now he's got the other half of Roman Grosjean to worry about here we go on to the back of Roman Grosjean, and he got a puncture. No, Roman! Why? No, no, this is Magnussen! This is not Grosjean, this is Magnussen, this is why he was so slow. Oh, my soul. 
Okay, Mag, I'm so sorry. And this was close. I really got startled here. That was a very close call. If I wasn't with on my wits there, I probably would have ran into the back of him. Here we head to the leaders, guys. This is Kimi Raikkonen in third position. And what is... Vettel! Vettel, what are you doing? My man, you just broke your front wing on the back of Kevin Magnussen's horse. Why? 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 You just threw your race away, dude. You probably threw away a podium. Oh, boy. Okay, so Vettel's got to be the first car to pit in this race. He throws on another set of ultra soft, so he's going for a pacey race now, but he's got, he's got, he has to stop again. Front wing's changed. Oh, Vettel. Man, dude, how did you not see that? Bro, come on. Oh, we, then further on, we go here onto one of the Red Bulls. I think this is Max Verstappen. Yes, it's Maxi. He comes into the pits for his stop. To be quite honest, the Red Bulls didn't have lots of pace. They were actually very slow. The Ferraris and the Mercs, like, they were in a league of their own. So Red Bulls got a lot to do if they want to catch these guys. Here we go back to my POV. That stands for point of view, just for those of you guys that don't know. My tires were holding up good, even though I was on a mission to destroy them. And I was just keeping on defending. Um, okay, that's a track um, extension. You did not see anything. Shh. Here we have the race leader, Lewis Hamilton. Come on, hamster. He's getting into the pits from the lead, and he's going to give the lead to Kimi Raikkonen, who stays out for a fairly long time on those ultra softs. Hamilton is going for a one-stop. He goes from the ultra softs to the soft tires, and I'm think I'm definitely thinking that Hamilton's going to the end. I don't see how those tires would make it. The softs are extremely durable. And on the following lap, we have Kimi. He also dives into the pits. I don't think he's going to jump Hamilton, he was too far behind. The question is, is he going to come out in front of his teammate, who has been on ultra so fresh ultra softs and pushing like crazy. So, pit stop done, Raikkonen is also going for a one stop, he's onto soft tyres. Here comes Lewis, he's barreling down the straight, he's going to get Raikkonen by far. And uh, he's past there, look down there, Sebastian, and Kimi's going to jump him. Raikkonen has got his teammate, and Sebastian's got a lot of work to do if he wants a race win or if he even wants a podium because even though the Red Bulls didn't have pace it's not only them he has to worry about it's about Bottas as well here we go back to me and wonderful Max Verstappen is behind me my senior team senior teammate can you call him that I don't know um, he wasn't alongside me so I just dove back in front of him and uh, yeah this was not an easy place to defend it's it was actually harder than defending from Bottas it's as if Max was more keen on going for dive bombs and stuff so you guys can see I go wide but I still keep Maxi behind me I don't know how I did this with all honesty uh, so yeah here we go back to my POV Max Verstappen is still behind me but I think this is the lap that I come into the pits and yes it is it's the lap I come into the pit lane and uh, the question is where am I gonna exit did I lose a lot of time by defending the whole time or am I still going to come out about 13 to 12 for the guys that do a two stop so I can try and catch them to get points. As you guys can see I go from super soft to soft. I'm going to have much fresher softs than the guys that put early but they're at the, at the lead of the Grand Prix. It's not as if I'm going to catch them. And I come out in P11. Oh my soul and there's a Williams. The, no, not a Williams, the Williams of Sergei Sorotkin ahead of me, and he's on super soft tires, he has to pit again. Okay, this is a guaranteed point. Come on, little Toro Rosso, this is big news, big news. We still got more than, well, basically half of the race to go. If this lap is halfway, then the race is halfway. Are these softs gonna hold me? Because I have to be honest, I'm not the best at managing tires, but uh, I, uh, I just need to stay, to stay on it. Here we have Charles Leclerc, he is behind Roman Grosjean, who is behind little old me, and Grosjean was attacking like crazy. And uh, here we have from Leclerc's POV, from the halo, which is an epic camera angle, I squeeze Grosjean, and Leclerc bumps into him and breaks the left front end plate of his front wing. Wonderful Leclerc, you make the move stick, but now you're going to have less downforce on the left side of your car. Not the smartest idea, I don't know why he just he kept it right, he had more than enough space, but that's the AI, that's the AI. Here we have Sergei Sorotkin coming into the pits, and now, now or now, I am in a point paying position. There I come out of the last corner, you guys will see me now, here I go, Yow! I wish for that old F1 sound back, but it's okay, it's okay, these V6s have been upgraded a lot, and they sound much better than they did when they were just put into the cars. We go on to lap 22. 
these tires were holding well, but I was defending literally as if my life depended on it from Roman Grosjean because this guy didn't give up. Like, he just didn't give up and he was pressurizing me the whole time. And remember, in the back of that Haas mode, he's got in the back of that Haas car, wonderful sin sentence construction there um, he's got a Ferrari motor that is on well almost on spec with the actual Ferrari motor so yeah here we have I think it's Sebastian Vettel after he went for a second pit stop yes it is he is behind the Red Bull of Daniel Ricciardo and um, he's going down the straight going for the inside dive is he gonna make the move stick very slow through that first corner Ricciardo is defending a lot but that Ferrari motor is just stronger and Vettel's gonna have the DRS yep rear wing open and that is Vettel into third position so Vettel is now in a uh, on a podium position but I don't think that that car even with super soft tires is enough to catch Hamilton and Raikkonen um, yeah you guys can see Hamilton was gonna lap the the back markers which I am a part of that w is going to change soon Hamilton I will come for you um, he just goes past and uh, I let him past and next is Kimi just a few corners later and when I was here I actually realized Kimi was pushing like crazy he wanted to catch that Mercedes and he had much better pace than Hamilton on the soft tires so bidding one lap later with for those soft tires I think it helped Kimi a lot as you guys see I just poached DRS off of him to get away from Roman Grosjean because my tires here were starting to overheat and I just needed a little bit of fresh air just to get the tire things back back to a lower temperature and just to to play along with it I mean it, remember if I finish behind the cars that lap me if they are on lap 25 or I'm on 24 now so when I'm on lap 28 they're on 29 and they will finish the race if I come across the line behind them my race is done so my head was focused on lap 28 I just needed to defend for four more laps four laps this one included I could do this I need it I need these points I need the resource points to get this car out of the bottom half of the field as you guys can see we keep going and stuff's going well uh, it's lap 27 as I cross the line two laps to go but Roman Grosjean isn't giving up he is hounding me like a lion is going off to his prey and just talking just talking waiting to jump out of the grass and pounce on me but I as what buck can I be because lions eat big prey so I'll be a no okay screw that idea not gonna happen but <laughs> um, as you guys can see a lap 28 we come through Lewis has won the Grand Prix and I am going to come through in 10th position for my first Grand Prix for Scuderia Toro Rosso Honda and I am taking home a point yeah baby let's go top job my friend top job I was a bit worried about this one at the start of the weekend but you pulled through thank you Mercedes have pulled off a great victory here today. And Anthony Davidson, give me your thoughts. How did they accomplish this result? Well, I'm, I'm saying it's just raw pace, plain and simple. I mean, we could sit here and talk about strategy all day. The overtaking, looking after the tyres. But at the end of it all, if you want to win, you need a package that's got the speed over everyone else. And that's exactly what they had today. And now let's take a look at the driver's stand. Lewis Hamilton takes over the lead of the driver's championship after an excellent result. Moving on to the driver of the day then, Anthony Davidson, who would you go for? I have to give it to O'Connor. They did a great job at getting the most out of their tyres without losing pace, something that's a very handy skill to have in modern day Formula One. On to the constructors then. Ferrari moves to the top of the table. After all that excitement, it's time for a lie down, I think. Thanks for joining us and goodbye until the next race. You're breaking all expectations. What's your secret? You left a lot of paint on the walls today. Were you struggling for grip or did you just misjudge some corners? Appreciate your time. Oh, guys, what a race! I can't believe I had a, I got a point in my first race 
for Toro Rosso Honda. I feel so good and um, as you guys can see after the resource points I actually get a rep decrease that is because of the interview with Claire but still I'm so hyped after this race it was just it was amazing it was amazing and I feel good this is going to be a hard but very good season I can't wait we've received invitations to new historic events you'll be able to choose whether or not to participate before the end of this weekend guys but unfortunately the first video is is heading to its end as you guys can see i just bought a few upgrades for the car that i needed and this toro rosso honda is going to go to the top I'm, I'm saying it now it's going to the top and i'm going to win a championship in this car before i leave this team but guys other than that this has been turbocharged 51 and i'll see you all at the bahrain grand prix for round two of this of the first season of my f1 today's career cheers